guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about can you learn medical coding in just two months? If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so I got a email <laughs> from a viewer and I'm gonna read the email here in just a minute. But to answer the question, absolutely not. And I will explain why you cannot learn medical coding in just two months, all right? Uh, so I'm gonna read this email and then we're gonna get into it. So let us begin. So the viewer says, good afternoon. Uh, hope all is well on your end. I have been a nurse for quite a while and I'm looking to get into medical billing and coding. However, I'm having some difficulty finding a school. Uh, I would prefer to do it online so that I have the school work-life balance. I've enclosed some pictures of the potential school in your opinion, is this school worth it? I know you're busy. Thank you in advance. Yes, I am very busy <laughs> and um, I'm only getting busier. And the reason that I say this is because I have over 800 videos on my channel. I have specifically put out videos where I say what I recommend, what kind of school I recommend. All right. Uh, for medical billing and coding. I've, I've, said, I've given my three options before and I'm going to go over them again, right? Um, but this is going to be <laughs> the last video that I'm going to do about this topic for a while because I really need you guys to look through the videos. They are there. It is very clear what I recommend for medical billing and coding school, for medical coding school, and, and I always say it in all my videos. You cannot learn medical coding quickly. There is entirely too much for us to learn. And even as a nurse, even if you're coming over from the nursing side, you still need time to learn this. Now, before you think that I'm attacking your ego, I am not. There are some nurses who will think that I'm attacking their ego and it has nothing to do with ego. It has everything to do with the fact that medical billing and coding is difficult. This is not anything, this is not like, um, circling from a super bill. That is what a lot of nurses equate with coding is that you're circling the diagnosis and the procedure from a super bill. No, that's not what this is. This is actually reading and abstracting diagnoses and procedures from the documentation. And a lot of times there's rules that go with what codes are being selected what procedures are being selected, what modifiers are being applied. So there's a lot more to it and you have to know the coding guidelines and you have to be able to know which, which book are you working with? <laughs> uh, as far as like, if you're coding in a hospital, are you going to be using the ICD-10 PCS manual? Or are you going to be coding from the CPT manual? Are you coding for outpatient? Are you coding for inpatient? Or are you coding for professional fee services? So there's a lot of different questions and you need a heck of a lot more time than just two months. So if you're a nurse and you're thinking, well, I already know all this stuff and I've been coding for years and you've only been circling, that is not medical coding. Okay, so I'm trying to set people up for success. So please take it that way because that's exactly what I'm doing. I want you to be successful, but I want you to be able to go through a program that is going to appropriately train you for what employers are looking for. This is why, and I'm going to say this right now, this is why I only recommend three different platforms for uh, medical coding training. I cannot uh, uh, recommend a particular college because I don't go to the, I've never been to these community colleges to know how the instructors are. Everybody is different. So this is why I say what you're looking for is for them to be one, training you for AHIMA or AAPC credentials, the American Health Information Management Association or the American Academy of Professional Coders. That's the first thing out of the gate. The program is two months. This program that this nurse had was looking at, it says become a medical, didn't say medical coding. It says become a medical and billing professional in under two months. And then it says, when are you considering a career in electronic medical billing and coding? And then, and then abbreviated it EMBC. No, ma'am. No, sir. That's completely wrong. And the program that they're training the, the individuals for is for the CBCS. One program is a thousand dollars and the other program is between, um, what is it? 10 and 10 and $20,000, 10 and $20,000 for a credential that no one is asking for. Okay, guys, don't do it. Look in your area. 
they I promise you, if they are looking for a medical coder, they want them to be certified through a HEMA or AAPC. You may as well light your money on fire if you are going to go through a cheap program that's going to charge you $1,000 or uh, between ten dollars and $20,000 for a credential that's not even being asked for. Okay, even if they're just doing the broad strokes and going over, oh, just so you can get an idea. No, guys, if you want to invest time in this, because you will need to invest time in this, you need to go with what is what they're training you for. And you have to look and see if it's offering a HEMA or AAPC. OK, then, you know, you're in a safe program. Now, as far as how long it goes, some people say four months, some people say six months. If they're training you for four months or six months, you better be ready to add additional time to your studies because four months and six months is entirely too fast. It is not enough time to be able to understand everything and know what you're, what you're doing. Okay. In order to be competent enough to sit for these exams. And if the school is just training you with these um, exam tactics, again, you need to make sure that while you can be trained with these exam tactics, Make sure that you're taking the time to learn. And if you need to find yourself a tutor as somebody who can uh, privately train you, then you need to do that, okay? There's a ton of tutors on LinkedIn. I'm a tutor myself. My rate is in the description box below. But keep in mind that I do tutoring. I do not do lesson planning, all right? There's no lesson planning here. People will mistakenly think that when they, they're, they're getting ready to book a session, they say, okay, well, um, I'll have um, uh, all my books, you know, then you can ask me questions. That's not the way that it is. You bring me the questions and I will answer you. And that's how that works, okay? I also have a Patreon channel. Patreon is a lot like YouTube if you don't know. <laughs> and the things that I have on Patreon is a supplement if you are going to to be in a, a self-paced medical coding program and you want something else to supplement. Um, I do lots of fun things on my Patreon channel. I do word finds, word searches, crossword puzzles. Uh, I've, do, I've done slide decks and things like that. So there's a lot of different options on uh, Patreon that is available there. Um, but if you are going to look for a school, right? I have always said that I only recommend going through Ahima online. Ahima does have their online medical coding program where you can learn. They have a 13 course bundle. I will leave the link for that in the description box below, but they also have the Ahima store, right? That has all of the coding programs. They have some that, you know, once you pay a la carte because they have the individual courses, where you can either have six months or you can have a year to complete that. So for some people, going through the 13 course bundle is a little too fast because it's a little over a course a month, right? And so they say, I need more time to learn blue. <laughs> so, or, or I'm a nurse and I don't need anatomy and medical terminology, and that's totally fine. You can buy the course for learning ICD-10-CM, learning CPT, learning um, ICD-10-PCS, straight from the Ahima store. So you can go exactly right where you need to go. And it's a la carte, so you can purchase it one course at a time. You can have either, um, it'll tell you how long you have. Some, some of them have six months, and some of them have 365 days from the time that you purchase in order to complete that. So that way you can take your time and pace yourself through those things. In order to sit for an AHIMA certification, the CCA, the CCS, or the CCSP, you do not have to go through a formal training program. You can go through the AHIMA online courses and that will prepare you just as fine, okay? Um, so that you can go through all of the courses that you need to in order to, pre to prepare yourself. But you can look at the, um, at the certifications and look and see at the domains so that you know um, that you have to study for medical law and ethics and HIPAA and all of these other things. So there's that with AHIMA. There's also the AAPC online medical tr coding training program. Now they do have a few different options as well. They do have the medical terminology and anatomy as a separate bundle um, from their coding course. So you can just purchase a coding course if you are a nurse and you just want to learn the coding part. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to purchase their test. You can certainly use that in order to prepare you for the CCSP if you wanted to go ahead and sit uh, for the outpatient certification uh, with AHIMA rather than going through the CPCA. 
uh, you can go through the uh, uh, CCSP, which is a Certified Coding Specialist Physician Based, and that is all outpatient coding. And if you go through that AAPC course, you can certainly um, take the, a the AHIMA uh, certification exam with that. It's totally fine because, again, you don't have to go through a formal training program. Now, AAPC will try to sell you <laughs> their certification, but keep in mind, AAPC has the apprentice um, that comes with their certification, the CPC, if you've never been a medical coder before, and um, it ha it's on there for two years. They'll tell you, oh, well, we can sell you Practicode, um, and that'll take one year of the two-year time commitment off. So Practicode is a collection of 600 real-world redacted records that you can code from, and they give you all of this time to, to be able to, I, don't, I forget how, many, how much time you have, uh, but they give you time to finish it, however long it says. <laughs> um, but then you go through and you finish that, and that's just that's going to take that one year off. And you're basically coding. It's not multiple choice. These are real world records with all the private information taken off. And then you can go through there, and it's meant to give you practice. Okay, this is not work experience. All right, no matter what anybody tells you, that's not work experience. All right, and the idea is is that if you already have a coding job and you're working this simultaneously, you can have your apprentice status removed within a year. But you will also have to maintain your membership with AAPC, which is another $190 every single year you have your certification. If you do not, they will take your certification away from you and revoke it. Uh, AHIMA does not require you to be a member. It does not require you to have a membership, but they do have a separate fee for members and non-members when it comes to reporting your continuing education units. There is a difference, folks, in the amount of continuing education units that you are going to have to report. And continuing education units are meant as a way of saying that you have continued your education to be able to keep your knowledge up on medical coding and all medical coders have to report these. Uh, it is different for the associations with AHIMA if you have one uh, the CCA, CCS, or CCSP, it is 20 continuing education units every two years with AAPC. If you have one certification, it is 36 continuing education units every two years. Now, don't think just because they're asking for more that it's, it's oh, this one is better. These are both quality associations, quality uh, credentials that you can get. So don't think that one is better than the other because these are who employers are looking for. The, the caliber of every medical coder is different and just because you have a credential does not mean that you know everything either, all right? It just means that you passed an exam. So when you see people with an alphabet soup, do not let that fool you because it doesn't necessarily mean that those people know everything, okay? Some do and some do not because sometimes it's just, oh, I just wanna see all these letters. And really, a lot of these letters are already tested on the first CPC exam that they take. So that is just something that you got to think about. And all you need is one certification to start with. You do not need to have a bunch of credentials. Having a bunch of credentials does not get you hired faster and it does not make you more money. What it does is make you spend more money because as you get more credentials, you have to earn more continuing education units. Number one. Number two, <laughs> um, you still have to be able to maintain all of these. So at the end of the day, you have to think about what you're going to make when you start and, and you know all of these things. If your employer is paying for it, that is something completely different, then by all means, go ahead and get that education. And if they're wanting you to get all these additional credentials and they're paying for it, that's okay. If they're wanting you to get additional credentials that are not needed because it's already covered in your original exam, I would be looking for another place to work because that's not right for employers to demand for medical coders to get additional credentials um, that are really not needed, okay? And some employers will do that. So it is about being very vigilant about the money that you are going to spend. You know, a lot of people are very concerned about money and how much money they're going to be making. I never talk about salary because the the starting salary for a medical coder, every place is going to be different. This is why I never give like specifics on that. But I find it 
um, interesting that people are still willing to go out and spend a ton of money uh, collecting a bunch of credentials and not really thinking about these things because they're trying to make the most money. Get yourself educated first. Be in the industry for at least two years, then start to add on additional credentials because then you'll know um, like what you're really getting into and if you really like this. I got an email um, the other, a couple of weeks ago from a viewer who said that, oh, um, I'm about to have four credentials. I've had my uh, credentials for a little over a year now and I still can't find a job and I don't know how I'm gonna be able to keep up with these. And they already have four. Why did you get four? Because the instructor told them that they needed to do it, that they needed to have it, and now look. And I don't think that's fair, okay? So I don't think it should be so stressful for brand new medical coders to number one, have to be forced to get all these things when it's not needed. And I'm telling you guys, it's not needed. Get yourself one credential and start looking. Get Even if you have the CPCA, you can still be out there looking for a job. And even if it says no CPCAs are considered, go ahead and apply anyway, because if they're desperate enough, they will give you a call, okay? So please don't get yourself um, sucked into one of these programs. And even if they're saying that, oh yeah, um, you, you can learn this for $1,000 or $1,200. So you can go through the AHIMA program online. You can go through the AAPC program online. And AAPC does allow for payment plans, okay? AHIMA does not, which is why I think it's great that they have the a la carte. <laughs> and then the final um, thing that I can recommend for schooling for medical coding is the independent study list that I have put out uh, many times and I have updated it. I think it's updated to the 2022 now <laughs> uh, But it's all updated and these are all the books and it's even got the timeline and now if you follow this timeline It'll take you a uh, roughly a year to complete this it will um, or you can go in less time if you if you need to like nine months or whatever but I still recommend that you at least try to find a program that's nine months 12 months or 18 months if you're going a little bit over and, and into 18 months, that's totally fine. At least this means that you will be ready. Uh, but you totally can do this independently. A lot of times, even at the colleges, they're having you learn independently. There's not going to be somebody there to hold your hand and, and to, you know, to guide you. There's a lot of independence that goes on. Now, there are some good schools out there with really good teachers. Again, I don't know because I haven't been to every single school. So this is not, I'm not able to answer that. But the only reason that I can uh, uh, recommend AHIMA or AAPC or the independent study is because AHIMA and AAPC are the medical coding powerhouses and that's their online medical coding program and who better to learn from, right? And the independent study is from what I remember from when I went to school and how um, these are the things that are covered on, on the uh, domains. If you look at the domains and if you're going through those books like I recommend, you know, you're learning the same thing for a fraction of the cost because you are getting the books on your own and then you're using this to study. And there's no charge for this, guys. There is none. I mean, I put this out there for, to help people because I don't like to, for people to get taken advantage of. It makes me sick to my stomach when I see things that like they're charging you thousands of dollars for a credential that's not even being asked for. You know, I just don't think that that's fair. I think that if you are going to invest all that money that you need to make sure that you are carefully looking at everything and not just taking a recruiter's word for it because that recruiter is not there um, to, to convince you not to go to a school. That recruiter is there to sell you a product okay so that is just my opinion and that is um where i'm gonna go ahead and leave this <laughs> message today but this again is the last time i'm going to answer this question for a while if you're asking me what i recommend for medical coding school programs ahima online aapc online or the independent study these are the only three Please don't send me the school and then the school link and ask me what I think of it, guys, because right now I'm getting so many of those. I really don't have time to answer every single one. OK, please look through the videos. I make these videos as a public service announcement uh, for all of you. So please take the time to look through them. All of the information is there and you can get answers a lot faster going through the videos and you can sitting there sending out an email 
to me and I, I may or may not be able to get to it. Okay. At least this is what I got to say anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If this video helped you, I hope you hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see y'all next time. Bye.